So that was Oasis with Wonderwall. And I'm absolutely delighted this evening on the 90s Rewind. Now, don't be too scared, kids. I've got Hugo Meyer with me. Now, you might be thinking, I, I, I recognise that name, but where do I recognise that name from? I, how about I say we have Trey Guard with us this evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Hello, Paul. And <laughs> you know, I was going to say, please don't start with the voice straight away. I, I, I'll lose listeners. They'll be running behind the sofa before <laughs> we start. Of course, uh, the, the the star of, of the 90s kids TV show Nightmare, around about the late 80s, early 90s. J just for those of you who don't remember, do you, do you want to just give us a quick price of what the, the show was about? I, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> and I, I've been asked on many occasions to describe, particularly before we'd even uh, had an audience, what the show was about. You try and describe it. And what do you say? Well, we catch some poor child, we put a bucket over his head, <laughs> and, then we, and then we get three other kids who shout at him a lot. <laughs> um, um, yeah, that's what it amounts to, really. So, yes, it, I think the only way you can describe it is, is an adventure quest hmm. rather than a game show or whatever. And it was very tough, completely empty studio, just blue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then three advisors sat outside and saw on a magical monarchy monitor what he was supposed to be doing and everything was created uh, um, um, computer wise whatever you call it mm. and this poor child had to overcome all sorts of obstacles and all sorts of puzzles and all sorts of things and try and get to the end of his quest <laughs> not many did no this was one of our listeners questions did it become infuriating for you because we as children we were going go left go left no it, there's a table there go left and did it become did you want to be saying to them do you really want to be going that way yeah, well, the, the whole point about it is the first audience participation television show. Yes. Because not only were the advisors shouting at the poor dungeoneer, everyone at home was shouting at the advisors. So you've got, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you've actually got an element, great element of drama in it. Uh, as you say, uh, the classic of a um, go left and it goes right and disappears down a big hole. You know, it's very, very sad. I mean, in terms of winners, for instance, there were only eight winners in eight series. Now, that wasn't a, a winner per series mm. by any stretch the imagination. Some series had no winners at all, some had a couple. So there were few and far between. Eight years it ran. We only got eight winners out of it. But that's it. I mean, it was, it did feel like every week that, that, you know, another one would, you know, be eaten by a dragon or another one would, you know, walk into a pit of fire or something. There, there was always some sort of sense of disappointment for the audience, but we kept coming. Yeah. Back. It was amazing. Well, it did for me too, because you, you had a team that was really good. I mean, it could be good in several ways on, on, on Nightmare. You had to be clever, mm. sort it out. You've got to be dexterous to be able to move around the place. But also you had to be good television. Mm. You, know, you had to have character with them. So when we had a good team that was really going well, I was thinking, well, yeah, we're going we're gonna to get there. And then they do something that they didn't take a clue or whatever it was. And yeah. I knew that three scenes later on, they were done. <laughs> And that was very disappointing. You thought, oh, no, they passed. Oh, no, why did they do that? Yeah. It was very exciting. I'll tell you for why. Because, uh, although it was recorded, we did it as though it were live. So there was no rehearsals and no okay. retakes. I was there. I was, I was as terrified as they were because you know, everything had to be right. You couldn't, yeah. you couldn't go back on anything. You couldn't say, oh, just a minute. I'm sorry I got that wrong. Because we didn't do any retakes. So you had to just keep going, you know. It's, it's a sort of a live version of TV, isn't it? It's yeah, uh, it yeah, must it, have been very tricky to do, particularly with the technology being quite new at the time as well, in terms of overlaying the uh, computer-generated stuff around the, 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 the children involved in the whole thing. And on the acting, um, let me talk about the part of Trey Guards. Was, did the voice come from the direction, or is this your character did you bring that voice to the character because it was utterly terrifying yeah i wasn't given any great direction i mean the whole thing was experimental to start with anyway we were sort of finding our way but the point uh, in the early series i had to provide the menace as well as the help because mm. we didn't have a villain oh okay and so, uh, there's i i was saying enter stranger <laughs> the poor child would be there shaking uh, <laughs> He didn't know how much I was shaking inside because I got to remember all this stuff and get it going and sort it out, you know. But um, it was interesting to note that when the, when the teams came in, of course, they, you know, stared at the lights. They looked, it was all very strange to them. But within a couple of minutes, they'd forgotten all that. They were mm. well into the story, well into the quest, you know. And as you can hear, sometimes they're yelling and sometimes and they did wonderful things. One of the things I really loved was the bomb room. 
I don't think we actually um, blew anybody up, or if we did, it was uh, only once. <laughs> but the point was, you know, the, the, each time they got into a new scenario, they said, oh, the dungeon would say, where am I? And they'd always say, you're in a room, which became quite funny to us after a minute. You know. And uh, the bomb room, there's a one great bomb, big round bomb with a fuse lit, burning, burning, burning. And, and the kids would start saying, the dungeon would say, where am I? So you, you're in a room. Ah, there's a big bomb in the corner with a fuse that's alight. What should we do? <laughs> and then they'd have a discussion. <laughs> and the Get fuse out of the room as there. quickly as possible, <laughs> yeah. possibly. <laughs> it was very funny. In, in the end, we had to slow the fuse down because <laughs> otherwise we would have blown them up, you know, which was not really much fun to do when you're in a team where you can be blown up on your first sort of thing. Just a, so, this is just yeah. me a little uh, a disclaimer at the end. No children were harmed during the making of this show. <laughs> yes, well, well, there were sort of people. Um, I mean, Mary, what's her name? Whitehouse, Mary Whitehouse. That's it. She, mm. she, uh, she wrote something actually even before the programme went out saying that um, we were in, engaged in sorcery and this ghastly middle-aged man was busy killing children or, or something like that. Excellent. Um, which That's is, like a rubber stamp of approval if, if Mary Whitehouse was writing about you. Should. Well, yes. I believe she did apologise later, but I don't know. Oh, well. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and now, uh, just uh, we've got um, uh, some listeners' questions uh, that have come in, and this is from Dominic, uh, who I know is a massive fan of yours, uh, and he's very jealous of me talking to you today. Uh, now, uh, now Dominic's asked about the about the nightmare series of books, the Choose Your Own Adventure books, uh, and he wondered if a you were aware of them, and b if you'd had any contact with them. Well, I was aware of them, and I had contact with them, but I had nothing to do with them. I say I had contact with them because at the time. Uh, they wanted me to sign them, uh, particularly in, in sort of posh bookshops and things, you know, with crowds of people coming out asking me to sign this book. I felt terrible because I had not even read it, let alone written it. So there I was signing my name and saying, oh, yeah, have fun. Um, I, I got to read them later. I thought they were great. But um, yeah, that, I mean, there were about six or seven, I think, in, in the end, mm. different versions. Well, they would choose your own adventure book. So you could, every time you read yeah. it, it was a different story, depending on what the right. yeah. was. Um, <laughs> very similar to the uh, to the TV show, which made you feel, I think, a little bit like you were a part of it. We're going to be uh, coming back to talking about your, your general acting career in, in, in a little while. Um, but we're going to break for some music now. Now, I, I think it's it's fair to say that when I asked you about choosing 90s music, you looked at me in a, fa in a face that just said, why are you asking me this question? It, did the 90s just uh, did, do you a musical bypass? Yes, they did, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think one of the reasons is that when you're working in theatre, um, you know, you're particularly uh, touring and stuff, you're in there at 10 o'clock in the morning, you finish at half 10 at night, you, you're away from home. Mm. So, you know, I wasn't really involved so much. And people have got radios going, they've got all this stuff going. I mean, it just wasn't, it just wasn't happening for me. I mean, I got other things to do like learning lines and things like that yeah you were kind of busy <laughs> yeah <laughs> well th uh, thank goodness your good lady wife was to hand because she's uh, she's given us a playlist on your behalf so this oh, is yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh this is uh, it's a good opportunity for me to play this is one of the uh, things we play at the top of the show each week and i never get to play the full track i'm really looking forward to it this is blur with girls and boys <laughs> <laughs> 